Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to talk about how to get admission and scholarship to a US university. And this video is specially targeted for people who may have low GPA or may have done their master's degree from an unranked or low ranked institution. So let's begin. Now before I begin, I should point out that it's much easier to get admission and scholarships for PhD than it is for master's degree. So if you are somebody who is doing a bachelor's degree, some of these comments are also going to be useful for you. So number one thing is that you should start showing a desire towards research and this should be shown in your bachelor's level, in your master's level. And one of the ways to do this is to look at how to write a thesis and how to write papers. So for example, if you are doing a master's degree, you should focus on doing a thesis option. So this could be the master's thesis by research, it could be the MPhil degree and try not to take the course based master's degrees because what will happen is that if you do a thesis based masters, you will have a thesis, you will probably write a paper, it may be a conference paper, it may be a journal paper and these PDF documents will be very useful when you communicate with a particular professor. So that's something to keep in mind. Even if you are a bachelor's degree student, try to write a paper with some professor when you are doing a final year project and sometime you may be able to get an internship at a different university, work with the research professor and write a paper there. So anyway, if you are able to write a paper that's going to give you a head start in the PhD admission and scholarship system. Now, one more fact is that whenever you are doing your master's thesis, try to select a problem which is in a field which is relatively hot. For example, if you are in computer science, go for problems in machine learning, in cybersecurity, in blockchain, and you can imagine whatever field you are in, what is the hot area there, because these are the area where most of the funding is going to be there and the professors are going to have grants for which they are going to need PhD students and these PhD students essentially get what are known as research assistantships which is one of the best ways to do the PhD in the US because what happens is that the research you do as part of a project is in line with your PhD degree and you end up getting the PhD in three to four years in many cases if you are already somebody who is knowing exactly what problem they have to do for their PhD. Now, during the process of doing the master's degree, you will probably be able to write a paper. So again, choose a supervisor who is relatively young, who is ambitious and who wants to write a journal or conference paper with their master's degree student. Now, the next point is for somebody who is actually doing a bachelor's degree is that try to do masters from a better institution. So many a time if you are doing your bachelor's degree from an unranked or low ranked university, if you go and do your masters from a well ranked university, this is going to greatly boost your chances of getting a scholarship to a US university. And this happens because the faculty are often very rank conscious. So if they see somebody who has done a master's degree from a university, which they know it may be anywhere in the world, but do keep in mind that most of the professors do know which are the good universities where papers are written from and so on. So this is going to give you a head start in your admission process because rank matters more than CGPA which you personally obtain. Now during this period take a blend of courses so that you have a good level of preparation as far as the PhD is concerned. So anytime you can take any preparatory courses, whether they be mathematics courses, statistics courses and courses in your core discipline, it's going to strengthen your application into the PhD program, even if you do not get a good GPA out of these courses. So what happens is that most professors like to know that you have taken some courses in some important fields. They are going to probably put you in another round of courses, sometimes the same courses in your PhD, but they know that you have some background on it. So you will probably get a good grade when you take these courses at the PhD level. Now the next part is that choose your master's thesis supervisor very carefully. And this is because you are going to need letters of reference for your PhD admission. 
and these letters of reference are very important particularly for PhD candidates. So if you are able to get somebody who has done his or her PhD in the US that's certainly going to help because these people know what is required in terms of the letter of recommendation. They also know some people out there in US maybe some of their old friends and very often you may be able to get a scholarship and admission just by network which they have. So again there are many openings which are out there in different research field and what happens is that people in the US sent off emails to their friends and then those friends sometimes give the information to their master's degree student that hey here is a possibility of your getting a scholarship. Now the fourth point is that you should cultivate soft skills and this has become more important because in the old days the statement of purpose used to be paramount in getting admission and scholarship and people used to write this statement of purpose as to what are their plans, why they want to do the PhD and so on. But nowadays even if you write the statement of purpose there is going to be a video call between the professor and you and this person is probably going to ask you to make a small presentation or he is going to ask you several questions about your research whether it is your master's thesis research or your bachelor's thesis research in case you are going for a direct PhD program. So in those situations you need to be able to project your research very well in a 15 to 30 minute talk you need to make a few slides and make a presentation and the professor is going to be very much impacted by the way you present your work by the way you talk to him and so on because do remember that communication skills are something which become more and more important as you try to become a researcher. Now the final point is that take the GRE and there are some people who say that the GRE is optional but I will tell you that the GRE is the best way to compare people from very disparate universities. So if you have student from Harvard University, from University of Kentucky, from NIT Trichy, from NTU Singapore, from the University of Tokyo, the best way to compare them is to look at the GRE scores because the grades which they get are going to be very much dependent on the university itself and often depends on the student themselves because there are students who take easy courses with relatively lenient professors and they have high GPA but they may not be able to do well in research. So do remember as far as research is concerned it's not necessary to have a high GPA to do well in research. In fact very often low GPA students do well in research. I have even made a video on that. I shall put some of these useful videos in the end screen. So what the GRE lets you do is showcase your quantitative and verbal skills to the professor and therefore if you have a good set of these skills it's certainly going to help you come out as a good research student at the US University. In fact, one of the reasons US universities became world famous is that they have very high selection standards. They go for the GRE and so therefore whoever comes at a US university from around the world has very high levels of quantitative and verbal score whatever the discipline. So you can think of people in psychology, in arts, in humanities, in engineering, in science who all have good quantitative and verbal score so they are going to certainly be able to do very well. So what happens is that the tech type guys have good verbal score that helps them write papers and the humanities and social science guys have a reasonable amount of math knowledge and this lets them use things such as statistical methods and quantitative theories in their research also. So all these things can become very handy. Finally, I would say that if you are somewhat weak in an area and you want to showcase it, you can go for the GRE subjects test. Specifically, you have tests in math, physics and psychology. So if you are somebody who wants to showcase any of these disciplines, you can take the GRE subject test and send it to the university if you get a good score. So I hope this video is useful for you. Remember that when you apply for the PhD, it's very likely that you are going to get a full scholarship in the US. And also PhD students have a much easier time in getting H1 visa, in getting jobs and in getting faculty position because they are already super qualified and therefore it is much easier for the different companies to say they really need this person very much because there are not too many people with those kind of qualifications. So I'll end this video now. I'll see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.